Moving on. Our next keynote speaker, we have Mr. Arjit Rai. He's the co-founder and managing partner, Paperboat Brand Works. And he will be talking about importance of transparency in building brand preference in the modern era. Arjit is a proven marketing advertising professional with over 25 years of experience across various roles with leading multinational communication groups. Over the years, he has worked on many categories across a varied spectrum of mandates. After successful 11-year innings with Rediffusion, DYNR across New Delhi and Kolkata, where he transformed a lesser-known Kolkata operation, one of the most profitable and awarded operation, winning five of the top six brand there, Arijit moved to Mumbai, completing 10 years at Ogilvy, Saatchi and Saatchi. Arijit moved to DND Mudra West in 2008, where he led the office to its best years as president to become the largest, most profitable and most awarded agency three years in a row. 22 new brands were added and the office won recognition at all award platforms in India and international forums. So to get an award for your, fun for your company, you know what you, do, what you need to do. You need to hire Mr. Rai, right? Ladies and gentlemen, can you put our hands together for Mr. Arijit Rai? Over to you, sir. Transparency, brands, and how to build brand, brand preference in the modern era. Now, since many, many years back, since the time we can remember, Transparency and honesty has been pretty much espoused as the pillars of character. And uh, when we talk about individuals who are transparent and honest, we say, uh, he's a nice guy, he's a straight guy, uh, he's a nice human being, he's transparent, he's honest. And they pretty much become the benchmark of character. And uh, when we transpose this analogy of transparency and honesty, uh, to the business of brands. Uh, in fact, we've uh, had some interesting conversations with, uh, uh, in my earlier corporate roles at Mudra and Densu, when we used to talk to the board, and we had these discussions that, you know, like human beings, even corporates should give back. You know? uh, well, that's a completely different discussion about charity and all that. Uh, but the point is, uh, it's fair to say that uh, even corporates, even business, businesses, should have good character. Yeah. Before we get into uh, the whole aspect of transparency and honesty as far as brands and business is concerned, I'll tell you a little story. This story is about uh, Gopal Chand and Chandu Chandumal. So Gopal Chand and Chandumal, they've gotten to Akbar's court. And Gopal Chand uh, comes with a problem and says, uh, about a month back, Chandumal actually borrowed some money from Gopal Chand. And so he tells Akbar that it's, it's been a month now, and I, when I went to get the money back from uh, Chandumal, he said, I never got that money. In fact, he's told him another story. The story is that a month back, Chandumal went to Gopal Chand's house, and Gopal Chand was sick. So in fact, to get medicines, he didn't have money, he borrowed money. So now Akbar's in a fix. So who say, who's saying the truth? Who's the liar? Who's, who's the guy who's honest? So Akbar actually relies on his uh, conscience keeper, his man Friday, and he calls Birbal. So Birbal, the conscience keeper, the intelligent person he is, he actually figures out a way to crack this problem. In what in today's day and age we'll call research, he actually sends his emissaries to the village. Actually, both these guys are traders. They both are traders. And he finds out that when he speaks to people, that everyone across the board, they love doing business with Gopal Chand. And most people avoid Chandumal because he's dishonest. He charges more. He's not transparent. So now the point, one is, and obviously Akbar Birbal gets his fantastic lead, and he figures out a way of cracking the code. So when we, you know, get this gist of the story and we apply to brands and people, generally we all like working with people who are honest and transparent. And similarly with brands, in today's day and age even earlier, consumers gravitate towards brands and businesses that are trustworthy, or brands and businesses who actually demonstrate an honest intent. So what is transparency? Do you, do you have definitions of transparency? How would you define transparency? Anyone from the audience? How do you define transparency? What do you think transparency is all about when it comes to brands and businesses? 
or just the word transparency? What comes to your mind? Yeah. Excellent. And anything else? Yeah. Very nice. Anything else? Very good. Very good. So, uh, pretty much in the same lines, I'll actually rattle off a few definitions of uh, transparency. One of the definitions says, transparency is the right to information, while openness is the right to participation. Honesty and transparency make you vulnerable, but be honest and transparent anyway. Uh, it's a difficult path, but you should be that, you should travel that path. This is actually a definition from a quote from Mother Teresa. Secrecy is the linchpin of abuse of power. Transparency is the only real antidote, which is what, I mean, anything that's secretive, anything that's hidden is the absolute opposite of transparency. And the next one says, Lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity. Now, in today's context, if you don't assure customers all the time, if customers develop insecurity, there's an iota of doubt, you got the customer in the short run, short run, but there's very little hope to build loyalty with that customer. And that pretty much defines why transparent, transparency is so important these days. Because, we are living in a hyper-transparent world. Not just transparent, the world is so sensitive that people demand information. And it's not a fad. Transparency, the word transparency, honesty, is not a fad anymore. It's a whole new different way customers are actually engaging with brands. Because customers are wanting information at every step of the way. So which means that brands, advertising agencies, digital companies, across the spe spectrum, have to give information to the customer. I'll actually take you through uh, three interesting, three or four interesting cases uh, in recent times over the last, some are very recent, some are about seven to eight years, and uh, different ways where companies have dealt with transparency or haven't been able to deal with consumers in a, in a very transparent manner and uh, discuss this further. This is a uh, very interesting case. Uh, PNG actually runs a beauty channel called Beauty Recommends on YouTube, and where they play lots of beauty uh, tutorials and cosmetic and beauty products. And this is one example. I'll play the video and then talk about it. Volumes. Volume, please. We go along because <laughs> what suits one lip look, and if you've got a very new lip, for example, doesn't necessarily like look so lips. great. If you're doing a very dark lip or, you know, a bright red, it's, it's, leave it, leave, leave it, leave it, leave it. Hi everyone, today I want to take you through three different wintertime lip looks. It's very, very cold, so I'm actually wearing my Christmas jumper. And I'm going to start off with a celebratory kind of um, lip look, which is the bright red lip. Now, with all of the looks that I'm about to show you, they're all very different. Um, and they all kind of require a little bit of a tweak with the eye makeup as well. So I'll just talk you through that as we go along, because what suits one lip look if you've got a very nude lip, for example, doesn't necessarily look so great if you're doing a very dark lip or, you know, a bright red, powerful lip. Do you have any clue what could, wrong, what could go wrong with this one? Something went wrong. Any clue? Now, uh, in social media, 
we want a very different kind of uh, different kind of engagement. They don't want to see glitzy advertising. They are sick of uh, you know commercial content, sponsored content. So they want brands to come to their level and engage with them in a conversational manner. And uh, a lot of companies and brands over the last four to five years have started pushing content, uh, pushing influencer-driven content to customers, because these are people who are bloggers, vloggers, uh, who are who are champions in their own rights, in their own vocation, and uh, they do a great job in talking to customers in a much more conversational and engaging way. And that's why influencer-driven content is. Uh, a large part of the marketing strategy for lots of brands and lots of large brands. But what al what's also happening is that brands are beginning to couch a lot of commercial content, camouflage a lot of com commercial content uh, with interestingly packaged um, conversational influencer-driven content. Now, what happened in this one was that there was a tag at the beginning of the, of the clip which says sponsored. But Advertising Standards Authority US told PNG that when you, when you have a beauty recommends channel, nothing tells a customer that it's from PNG. So you have to explicitly say that this is commercial content, because as a customer is eva evaluating that content, there's a thin line which divides commercial versus influencer content. The customer doesn't know. So it's, it's telling you that environment is become, becoming more and more sensitive. The next example is uh, what happened to MasterCard. And uh, MasterCard, suddenly uh, it was revealed, it went in the public domain, that the PR agency of MasterCard had actually given a pass to a journalist to the British Music Awards in exchange of few pre-drafted tweets. Now, three, four, five years back, PR agencies do it. I mean, journalists get favors. That's, I mean, that's a part of the business. But now, it's become so sensitive, the moment it happened, on Twitter, MasterCard got trolled. And the MasterCard brand name, which is the brand proposition, which is priceless surprises, that became the hashtag. And uh, over three, four days, the brand was actually brought down. The next example is uh, from IKEA. Uh, what happened recently was uh, about a couple of years back, there was a mass recall of IKEA dressers in the US. I'll play the video clip and we'll talk about it. Well, IKEA is pulling back tens of millions of dressers warning they could tip over and kill a small child if not properly secured. ABC's David Curley has the latest on that. Just ordered this morning, furniture giant IKEA recalling 29 million dressers because of a risk of tipping over with deadly consequences. That is devastating. It is. It's fatal. The pictures, the numbers are stunning. This is our way of enacting what actually happens in American homes. Most of the dressers were already under a repair order. More than 30 children have been hurt. Six children have been killed. Did it take a sixth death of a child for you to get a full-blown recall? Sadly, David, it did. One of those deaths, two-year-old Curran Collis. His mother found him pinned under an IKEA dresser. Send it back, get rid of it. It's dangerous, it's a, it's a really dangerous product. And um, I, I don't wanna see it in any homes. I, I, don't want any, I don't want this to happen to any other family. While Jackie Collis is suing IKEA, she is pleased this morning that the company is recalling so many units. IKEA now offering to buy back any unit made after 2002 at a cost of what could be more than $2 billion. IKEA says its dressers should all be anchored to the wall and has been offering repair kits for older units, but now admits these dressers that are under recall didn't meet standards. We have stopped selling uh, all the products that are not meeting the voluntary industry standard in order to make sure that we actually are doing the right thing. This can happen in really just a second. Watch this. I IKEA is now offering an anchor kit. They'll come out and put it in, or they will buy back any unit made after 2002. George and Robin? That is startling right yeah, there. Yes, demonstration. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> you saw the clips. It was so dangerous. I mean, you, you saw those dressers, and you knew it's disaster about to happen. And those dressers, didn't seem durable from any standpoint. But the point is 
that at that point of time, IKEA chose short-term profits over consumer safety. Nobody in the company thought it's important to arrest that problem immediately. And it took six deaths and 30 injuries to, uh, for IKEA to get into action. Because somebody in the company felt, let's go on. Somebody actually didn't anticipate the problem and, and didn't choose to be honest and order the recall immediately. As a result of that, what happened was 36 million chests were recalled, six deaths and 30 injuries, cost of total US dollar $2 billion, and a huge damage to reputation. All because the brand didn't act honestly and transparently at the right time. Now, what's happening is that more and more we're seeing that transparency and honesty is becoming a mandate for brands. Because consumers are seeking that. So there are various studies that have actually uh, dealt with the fact how important uh, transparency and honesty is for consumers to make purchase decisions. I'll, I've put together a, uh, a compilation which talks about the importance of this and will kind of pepper it with a few uh, interesting numbers. Uh, one of the studies says that 94% of consumers say transparency is important for making purchase decisions. About 47% of consumers said they would boycott a brand if they found the brand was manipulating the system. 64% said they will stop using social media if it becomes overloaded with messages. And about 74%, 73% said they will actually, they don't mind paying more for a brand if the brand is known to be transparent. If you pull back, and analyze what, why, what, what is happening and why this is happening, uh, we'll realize that there's a huge amount of self-awareness that's blowing through our country and globally. And that's a big change. What is happening is that we are actually going through an ethical revolution, which means that people want better, creative, healthier, e ethical alternatives. So in their journey towards self-realization, in their journey towards evolving, going more inwards, people are actually wanting the mirrors in the band, brands. They're looking at shared values in the brands. That is why they're actually looking at more background information. So when I look at a brand, I will look at how ethical the brand is, how honest the brand is, and only then I will decide to go with the brand. So that's becoming a huge, huge challenge for brands. Secondly, technology and social media has made the brand hypersensitive. You, you saw the PNG example. That's, that's the kind of hypersensitivity that we're dealing with. That any kind of content that you push through is not enough. You have to be very, very clear, explicit in uh, telling the customer where this content is coming from, where the brand is coming from. Yeah. And customers today, consumers today, don't take brand messages face value. Five, six, seven, eight years back, a lot of the sales messages, advertising messages, glitzy advertising messages, you could, you could kind of uh, do lots of advertising without thinking how the customer is taking it. Not today. Consumers are saying, no gotcha marketing. No smoke and mirrors marketing. No glitz and glamour. I, we want authentic information. We want authentic stuff. And what, what they're saying is, tell us straight. Tell us as it is. We want straight communication from you. We want information. If you don't give me information, we'll go elsewhere. And this is impacting the advertising marketing domain uh, in many ways that we can imagine. It's affecting the way the brands are treating consumers, the brands are creating the advertising strategies, and it is also affecting the way marketers and big companies are dealing with their advertising and digital agencies. For example, recently there was a, there was a controversy on the ad, in the digital media especially, on ad placements, on third party verifications, and the fact that the metrics available in the digital industry today is woefully inadequate. And a result of that is that consumers, sorry, uh, brands and large companies are wanting to take back control. Some quick numbers. Transparency is number one priority. In fact, more than uh, people are wanting third-party third associations, 
so they can verify the kind of uh, spots that have run on digital medium. 18% of clients are getting their progr programmatic buying in-house. So lots of these companies who had uh, large digital agencies doing digital buying and media planning for them are actually getting their entire programmatic buying uh, internal. So they are doing it in-house. 53% are getting auditing rights built into the contracts. And 41% are saying, we want far greater control of the advertising spends in the digital medium. So the point is that things are changing. And, things, and this, this change is impacting every step of the way. Recently, uh, all of you are aware that uh, Uber lost its license in London. They're in the process of applying, it, applying for it. And uh, the, the Uber CEO uh, apologized in public media the day before yesterday. And this is what his uh, statement is. While Uber has revolutionized the way people move in cities around the world, it's equally true that we've got things wrong along the way. On behalf of everyone at Uber globally, I apologize for the mistake we've made. It can't be more frank than ever. We will appeal against the decision on behalf of millions of Londoners